the greatest commodity possessed by all humanity on earth is time and what's amazing about time is that everyone has the same amount a lot of us don't have the same amount of money but we all got the same amount of time 24 hours every day time is what I call the currency of life currency is what you use to buy things and you've heard the term spending time that is a true principle we spend time and what you are was purchased by the time you spent what you are right now your life you cannot really stop time you can't even save it but you can control it and you control time by making a plan a plan tells time how you're going to spend it and without a plan time is wasted please write this down God has a plan for your life that's why God has plans for your life because he knows that without a plan you waste time and each year is a chapter in God's plan in your life and I think we need to focus heavily on planning this new year and I mean planning it now because the year is gonna be so tumultuous it's gonna be so chaotic some of you are actually going to lose your mind. You're going to lose your sanity. You're going to lose your marriage. You're going to lose your homes. You're going to lose your cars. You're going to lose your health if you don't get yourself lined up with God's plan. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you. Plans, declares the Lord, to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future and God says if you follow my plan I'll set you free from the captivity I will deliver you from the bondage so what do you do when everything you trusted in collapses in a storm how do you prepare for a sudden change in your life and how do you recover when life hits you on the blind side and some of you know what that feels like what do you do after a lifetime of hard work and dedication and commitment and loyalty how do you change your vocational skills suddenly when they release you from your job? When all your skills that you learned, they don't need anymore. What do you do when the rug is pulled up from under you, as we all know, is happening to so many people? How do you face the family you once left behind to go back home because you couldn't pay the rent and the mortgage and you have to go live with your parents again? But what I like about life is God says, that as long as the earth endures there'll be seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and there'll be day and night and these will never cease because as long as the earth remains there will be seed time and harvest time there will be some dark nights but there will be days coming afterward there will be winter it'll be cold but i promise you he says there will be summer. if you broke now i guarantee you can't be broke forever if you're sick right now, that's a season of sickness. Use your faith and say, God, I'm going to make it through this season. On the other side, this sickness is good health and good strong body. There'll be showers of blessing in what? Seasons, he says. In other words, seasons are controlled by God. That makes me very comfortable. Because whether it is raining or sunshine, God is in control everything is seasonal that means that no matter what you go through it cannot last seasons are important because seasons guarantee change seasons give hope nothing remains the same in a season seasons are always temporary and the key to life is outlasting the season this is very important because when you are in a dark moment sometimes you think that that's a permanent address but never make a permanent decision to try and solve a temporary problem what happens in divorce many times in, in, in a marriage. You go through a very tough moment. I mean hell on earth. Believe me, you got a choice. Am I going to make a permanent decision at this point? Or am I going to outlast this season and, and make it through this dark moment? It happens with friendships. It happens with even jobs. It happens with business. Sometimes you want to quit the business. Life is so tough. But everything is seasonal. That's the encouragement of life. When you see a storm coming, 
I want you to understand the nature of storms. Storms are natural. Everybody say natural. Storms are natural. Storms are temporary. There's no permanent hurricane. There's no permanent earthquake. There's no permanent tsunami. There's no permanent cyclone. They are all temporary. Storms are always moving. Hurricanes, you hear them talk about the movie. Seven miles per hour, 10 miles per hour, five. They're moving. Every storm in life is moving. Storm force change. That's important. Storms force you to change. Don't curse a storm. It comes to bring you back to your sanity. Storms confirm how strong you are. No matter how much you claim you got faith, storms will test whether you get it or not. Storms reduce you to God again. That's why storms come. They come to reduce you back to God. Some people become so proud. They make so much money. They got all this stuff. All of a sudden, bam! God says, thank you very much. A storm comes to bring you right back down to God. You see, a storm will come to tell you what's valuable again, like your spouse and your children. A storm will bring you back to what's important. Don't curse a storm. A storm will come to remind you that in everything you gain, all you can take is a box. And all them, and all them clothes that you so cute, proud of, somebody else waiting for you to die, they're going to wear all your clothes. Get back to what's important. It's people and God and family and worship. Invite some storms to come into your life and show them how bad you are. Just show them how I'm going to stand. And after having done all, I'm going to stand. Never trust a person who ain't survived nothing. Everybody could brag, but few of them can testify. Let me tell you something about the eagle. The eagle is the only bird that looks for storms. And it's the only bird that God identified with. The eagle is a strange bird and he's the king of birds. Here's why. Number one, the eagle is the king of birds because the eagle understands storms. Secondly, thirdly, the eagle looks for storms. It's the only bird that looks for storms. He, in the desert, you see an eagle gliding high looking for storms, sandstorms and, and cyclones. Why? Because the eagle welcomes storms. Why? Because the eagle flies toward the storms when he sees it. Now why would you do that? The answer is very simple. The eagle uses the storm to increase height. Number, number seven, the eagle uses the storm to rest. The eagle wing can be seven feet span. And when an eagle sees a storm, he goes into the storm, he lets the current of the storm push him up higher, and then he sets his pinions and he rests on the top of the storm. When the storm is present, the eagle rests. I'm an eagle. I want you to use every storm that comes. Someone just say amen right there. And I want you to tell the storm, I'm going to use you to go higher in faith. And I'm going to lock my faith on you. And I'm going to rest in the God who is the God of the storm. And when I finish using you, I'm going to let you just go on by. This is why you have to learn how storms work. Eagles do not fear storms. And I challenge you to be like an eagle. Because eagles are the most successful birds in the world. Nothing is permanent except God. God promises that nothing is permanent, but only God is permanent.